Hey everybody, my name is Adam B. Levine. I'm the editor-in-chief of Let's Talk Bitcoin and the LTB Network. And today we're going to discuss how to register for letstalkbitcoin.com. I'm going to show you how to create a free counter wallet at counterwallet.io that can hold Bitcoin, LTB coin, and many other tokens. We're going to then associate that new wallet with your LTB coin account, which lets you participate in the LTB coin rewards program and also token controlled access. Then we're going to use a little bit of LTB coin to buy some submission credits. And we're going to show you how to get started creating your first blog entry using those submission credits. We've got a lot of ground to cover here, but it's actually not that complicated. Stay with me, stay fast and loose, and here we go. So first you go to the upper right-hand corner and click Login Register, where you'll either be logging in or registering, depending on how new you are to the site. To register, you create your username, password, email, and email is important both because the site emails you when people message you within the system, and also you'll need to verify your account as one of the ways that we control spam. Another way we control spam is with this CAPTCHA. doesn't work tremendously well, but it's better than it used to be. So you can kind of just tab through it until you find one that looks like something you type it there. Then you click register now. Uh, we've already registered this account, so I'll just log in real quick. And this takes us to an account that has a little bit of stuff on it, but it's basically a new user. It says down here, it looks like you have not registered for the LTB coin rewards program. You can click there if you want to learn more about it, and that'll take you to an informational page. But if you want to just get started by associating your account, skip that, I'll just show you how to do it. The address manager lets you take a Bitcoin address, one that can accept counterparty tokens or not, that would be, you know, one that accept, can accept LTB coin and other tokens like it or not, and associate it with your Let's Talk Bitcoin address. And then once you've verified that you actually control that address, then we can trust you and essentially say, okay, any tokens that are contained with that address, we consider those owned by the person, by you essentially, by whoever has proven to us that they actually own the address. So to do that, you go to counterwallet.co. And you click create a new wallet. So essentially the way that counterwallet.io works, I see that they've changed the URL. It used to be counterwallet.co, but it's now counterwallet.io. And basically how it works is that this is your password. And if the service counterwallet.io were to disappear, this password, if it was put into another version of the website launched somewhere else, would access your same account. So there's no risk of the website going down or anything like that. Um, it's not a perfect solution, but it's better than some of the other games out there. And it is much better than maintaining your own wallet on your own computer. That takes a lot. Uh, the, the wallets for uh, desktops just really aren't there yet when it comes to tokens. Once you find a password that you want to keep, you should write it down on a real piece of paper somewhere. But then it's also good to either use a tool like Password Safe or LastPass. And uh, these are essentially password database tools that let you maintain one hard password that you remember and only use for that. But that once inside that, you have access to all of your other passwords. And so they can be really secure because you only need to remember the one hard one. They're really worth it. I recommend it. Once you've secured it, however you're choosing to do that, you select that button and click continue. You have the ability to set up a quick access URL, but I've had mixed results with this step, and so we're just going to skip it for now. You would take your now 12-word passphrase that we just generated there and enter it here and click open wallet. I've actually already done this because it takes a while to open the wallet sometimes. And so you can see over here that this is my new little account. Here's the uh, address. And this address, you want to copy and then move over to the address manager and put it there for your Bitcoin address. I'm going to put this as my account wallet. And when you select primary address, it means that LTB coin rewards will be directed to this address as your nominal one, as the one that you want us to send stuff. And the second way that you confirm that is by clicking counterparty compatible address. You can make an address counterparty compatible and it means that other people will know. If somebody looks it up or something, they'll be able to see potentially. And through our distribution system, which I'm not going to get into here, you might be opted in or out depending on that. 
And then the other thing is public address, which means if someone looks at your user profile on the Let's Talk Bitcoin network, if you have a public address, they'll be able to see your counter wallet address and potentially be able to send you tips or tokens of some kind or whatever. But if you'd rather keep that private, then you can just leave it unchecked and it does not show. So uh, we are going to submit. And that should add the address to our account. But there's one more step. And that is to verify the address. Technically, there are two ways to do it down here. But sign a message does not work because Counter Wallet currently has broken message sign. So you click make a small donation, and this is any amount of Bitcoin. There's no uh, minimum. The instructions here are clear, but it's easy to get confused. It says send any amount of Bitcoin from this address, which is the address we, are, we just gave it to verify, to this address. So make sure that you send it from this address to this address. This is the one that you need to really be thinking about, not this one. We're going to send... Just a token amount, 0. 0.00001 Bitcoin, send, and Counter Wallet will take a moment while it does its thing. And over here, we are waiting for payment. So we're waiting for payment, waiting for payment. This doesn't wait for any confirmations. It just waits for it to essentially be broadcast to the network. So as long as it takes Counterparty to do that, and we'll get a confirmation that pops up here telling us it either went through or has a little error. That's how long, essentially, it takes for our system to detect. So it's really, really fast once you get past the part of actually making the transaction. It's also important that you, if you have multiple wallets, make sure that you send the funds that you're going to verify with to this address first. That you've just put on your account. And uh, not to send it from your other wallet, because that actually won't do it. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to make sure that you have the private key and thus can make a transaction from this wallet, the wallet you're telling us that you own. So it has to be from that wallet. So sometimes it's a two-step process. Sometimes you have to create a counter wallet and then send a little bit of Bitcoin there. And then from that Bitcoin, send it on to our verification service. But it's a one-time process per address you choose to associate. So let's try making that send again. So 0 0.000, let's try 0 0.00. Zero, one, one less zero, maybe. The things that tokens enable are just going to absolutely change the world. And this stuff that we're doing here is so hokey, you know, kind of just like the first very things that you could think of to do. And it's hard. It's hard, you know, like having to make transactions multiple times because sometimes the thing that's actually making the transaction just doesn't work. That's really tough. But it's going to get better. <laughs> And it's so promising for what's coming and for what these things will eventually do. All right. So that time the uh, send worked. That's good. And uh, let's head back over here. And we can see that actually while we were uh, waiting, while I was uh, blabbing there, it was actually verified. So this account is now verified. And if we go back to the dashboard home, we should see that... Uh, LTB coin compatible address is here and you could see a QR code. That's your address if uh, you wanted to. And so if somebody else wanted to send you something, they could do that too. And then token balances, this takes you to your inventory. And we've been going back and forth on what to call these things. Technically, it's called the inventory, but the metaphor that I really prefer is pockets. Each address is essentially a pocket that you can make a public pocket or a private pocket I forgot, sometimes you need to click update my inventory, and yep, there it goes. Now it shows the appropriate 1JH8, which is the same address that we just verified over here, and it shows our balance of LTB coin. So the token inventory is what we call this, and basically for each address that you verify, you'll have the different balances displayed of the various tokens on that, not including Bitcoin, actually just uh, counting your other tokens. And this is used in our system for a couple of things, but the main one is for the token access system, which essentially lets you look at content or visit pages. And depending on the tokens that you have in your inventory here, the page might actually load and display different things to you. And actually within our system, they, these tokens can give you different powers. So for example, 
people who create podcasts for the Let's Talk Bitcoin network have a podcaster token. And that token essentially makes it so that rather than having to go through the editorial process where they have to have somebody else schedule their uh, post, this allows them to schedule it themselves. And it allows them to also access a podcaster on the area where they can discuss things specifically uh, and with the privacy of other podcasters. And in general, kind of gives them that sort of role-based access. This is a concept we're going to be pushing a lot more in the future, and it's something that definitely extends to users because, again, the idea of uh, token control uh, is really the idea of subscriptions with tokens, um, where the possession or not of a token governs whether or not you have access to a given thing. So it's a very cool concept, but it's not really... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I've gotten too far into the weeds here. last step we're doing today is uh, how to submit your first blog post, essentially, um, or article to the Let's Talk Bitcoin system. And the reason why you'd want to do this is twofold. One, you have something that you want to say. You have a message that should be getting out there or analysis or a perspective that would be valuable to people. And so we really, uh, the, the Let's Talk Bitcoin platform for me has been that, has been the ability to uh, express myself and to bring, uh, I think, attention to things that I think are important. I really enjoy using the platform that we've created to uh, give that same ability to other people. So that's one side of it. The other side of it is that you'd like to earn some LTB coin. And the best way pretty much to earn LTB coin is to participate in the, um, in the content creation program where all the articles that are created over the course of a week are rewarded with a pretty decent amount of LTB coin. I think it's uh, about 100,000 LTB coin or so per article twice oftentimes. Uh, the first time is just an even split based on how many other articles published that week. And then the uh, second round is four weeks later, where the performance, relatively speaking, of the articles released during that same week as you released are compared. And then another amount is distributed to everybody based on how good they did. So, so it's a performance-based metric for that second one. We used to just let people submit articles whenever they wanted. But we wound up having a spam problem because because this is the best way to get LTB coin, somebody and apparently thought it was a good idea to create a program that created a lot of uh, bots that essentially uh, submitted posts that would never get on the front page that weren't really even posts. And so kind of just gummed up the works and, and made it generally very difficult to work with. So we have a new submission system that essentially lets you purchase credits in order to submit. And so in, or so in order to submit one new article, you need to uh, give us 1,000 LTB coin, which then gives you one submission credit within our system. So up here, you can see I've already purchased four credits, but we're going to purchase a couple more. So in order to do that, I need to send at least 1,000 LTB coin to the following address. And for every 1,000 I send, it's going to give me one token. So we're going to bring this up to an even 10. So we're going to order six tokens. So let's pop back over here and you get our LTB coin. Let's see here. So 6,000 LTB coin. And then we're back to the transaction processing. And as soon as this confirms and goes through, we should see. Let's see here. Waiting for payment. Do, do, do. <laughs> Just so you know, submitting an article doesn't mean that it will get published. Submitting an article means that it will become available to editors within our system who will then have the opportunity to look at it. And if they want to edit it, if they think it's a good piece and they'd like to associate themselves with it, or they think that it's you know a piece that they could help, then they can choose to take it on and push it through the system, essentially. They'll work with you. There's a discussion, port, there's a discussion section of your article once it goes into editorial. You'll be able to talk back and forth with uh, whomever it is that you're working with. But again, I just wanted to emphasize that it's not a guarantee when you get published. It's a guarantee that it will get to the stage in our system where a editor is going to look at it and you will get at least some kind of feedback, if not someone working with you. Hmm. Usually it doesn't take that long. The payment went through. Let's see here. Maybe I'll refresh and it'll just give me the credits. No, it didn't. Well, anyways, 
It worked when I tried it a couple of minutes ago. Oh, there it is. Okay. 6,000 LTB coin received. You have purchased six submission credits. Okay, great. So now <laughs> once we've done that, you can see we now have 10 submission credits up here. So I click new submission and it uses one of those credits to essentially launch this article. We offer formatting for our articles in Markdown or the more standard W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G. I have no idea what that stands for, but it's the kind of more word style text editor. The thing about Markdown is that when you write in Markdown, you are actually writing in the code. So uh, in the code that will be interpolated to get to the website. Whereas when you use the other editor, you're using an editor that will then be interpolated to a level that will then be interpolated to the code. So it's just generally easier to use markup. So another thing that's cool about using Markdown is uh, you can see a live preview of what you're going to write in addition to the code that you're actually writing. So if I wanted to say, this is a bolded statement, then all I have to do is put it within that, and that uh, you see below bold, move that down and put announcement using uh, a couple of hashes to indicate, and I can change that. So it's this really versatile tool when you use Markdown, and generally I really encourage you to get to know it. If you don't know it, you can click here, and it'll take you over to the Markdown formatting guide, which is, again, a really useful reference to know how to use this, this type of system. So you enter your post title, you enter the content of your post, you go over to the status and category, you select the desired publish date that you want, and understand that there's going to be at least a three or four day delay between you submitting your piece, in terms of it being actually ready for an editor to look at, and it actually going live. Eventually, this time frame will get shorter, but for now, it's, it's at least four days, and sometimes it can be longer. So uh, you will need a cover image, which is a 400 by 400 image. And you can see that that's really what these images are here, 400 images. So it's important that it's square, otherwise it shows up like this. It actually looks okay for this particular one, but uh, you can tell because the clickable part is only up here. So anyways, the point is, is you need a 400 by 400 image. And then select what type of uh, article it is. Most things are going to be general. Yes, blogs are for very specific people, generally, who aren't posting their own thing. LTB News is specific. Uh, just, just generally keep it to general. And if you have a particular topic that you think should be on the list, then please tell us. The post status, this is the thing that's, that determines whether or not an editor can see your article at this point. So long as you are on draft, then it's just you. But once you put ready for publishing, then it lets the editorial system and a lot of editors know that your piece is available and people start paying attention. So make sure that you uh, wait to do that until the piece is actually ready. Metadata uh, is the third category here. A SoundCloud ID, you only need, need this if you are creating a podcast. That's also true of audio URL. Bitcoin tipping address. You can put in a specific tipping address for this particular article, and if you don't, then it'll automatically be populated by whatever your primary address that's it. You can leave notes and they stay with the piece. And then once you are actually into the editorial phase, you'll be able to use the discussion node too to talk back and forth with whomever is working on the piece. So uh, we haven't done really anything here. So let's just do test. Submit. And this should take us back to our submission center where we now see we have one submitted post, although it's not a actually submitted, it's still draft. Um, we have nine submission credits left. Uh, we could purchase more if we wanted, but there's really no reason since we have nine. Uh, we have the ability to click this to just view the page as a draft. Pops it up exactly as it'll show, including your biopic and uh, any other relevant information. Uh, you can edit it to go back into the editor, or you can move it to trash. And in the editor, here you can see that there are, again, a couple of different categories. Here's the discussion tab. And anyone who's on this article can see this discussion going on. But of course, very few people can see it. And the other thing that uh, comes in is versions. And version lets you uh, compare and track, essentially, changes made from one version to another. This is especially useful when you're in the editorial process and you want to look at what an editor did. You can oftentimes look at this and you'll be able to easily see. And uh, if we had a bunch of different drafts here, you'd be able to compare multiple versions, just any version again. So that's it. 
that's the system. <laughs> There's obviously a lot more to it. This is kind of the basics and the intro to it. But uh, I think that we've, uh, we've, we've, we've done what we set out to do, which is to uh, show you how to register for letstalkbitcoin.com, then how to create a free counter wallet on top that can hold Bitcoin, LTB coin, or a bunch of other tokens. We showed you how to associate and verify your new wallet with your LTB coin account, uh, which lets you participate in the LTB coin rewards program, which is sent out weekly, and our token controlled access experiment system. We bought submission credits. And then we uh, set up our first article and talked about the various states that that was in. And uh, I think we even talked about the inventory a little bit, although I didn't get to talk about that perhaps as much as I want. So that's it. Uh, you know, I'd like to really thank you for participating in this system. Uh, it's totally an experiment. We're just, you know, the point here hasn't been and really isn't to make money. The point here is that these types of systems are better. And eventually, they will be much, much better. Right now, we're in the they're better intrinsically, but you know, actually using them is quite difficult because none of the interface actually exists to to really take advantage of that. But we're getting there, and it's tools like the LTB coin, uh, like LTB coin, the LTB platform, and the broader Tokenly platform, which is what LTB is built on, that are bringing us to that point. So once again, thank you very much for being one of the first users of this system. I hope you find it useful. Please uh, participate on the forums and tell us the things that you find useful, the things you don't find useful. Uh, you know, this is a work in progress and the community is driving it. Thank you again for your time. My name is Adam B. Levine. I'm the editor in chief of Let's Talk Bitcoin. Have a good day.